Hey everyone, and welcome to the Sleepy Fox Yarn Podcast. I am your host, Holly. I live in North Carolina with my family, and this is a podcast about knitting, crocheting, the yarn I'm hoarding, and any other occasional crafts that I would like to share with you all. Um, so <laughs> we have a jam-packed episode this time around, so I'm going to do a quick hello all new subscribers um thank you for subscribing to stick around to watch some more of my content and thank you returning subscribers for sticking around with my very inconsistent upload schedule and just bearing with me and yeah so let's get started because we have a lot to cover it's been i think almost a month since my last upload which is insane insane to me because it does not feel like a month has gone by it is insane um so let's do um shop update first get it up and out of the way um so i have recently put up five new colorways sorry my chair is like super squeaky i have put up five new colorways in the shop which are these beauties right here they are amazing which the light is blowing out so bad right now um so we'll start with this one this is berry harvest which is blowing out like no other because there are, i'm doing this in artificial lighting right now <laughs> Woo! a fuzzy um, so this is Berry Harvest. This is the DK base. This is my first time actually having this DK base in the shop. Um, it is also the same DK base that was used for the Halloween Advents, which have been shipped out. They are done. There is no more. Um, so this is my Arctic Fox base. It is a four ply, um, 75 25 so this is 25 percent nylon 75 percent superwash merino 100 grams for 245 yards and let me tell you this is so squishable guys so this is berry harvest and then we have for the love of pumpkin which is coming out very light orange but it is a lot deeper in person and there's a lot of tonal going on in here it is so pretty if you go to my instagram or you are um, on my mailing list which i do have a mailing list at sleepyfoxyarnco.com um you can join that and i do not send more than three emails a month most of the time it's basically one um or when something new is coming up that's about it i do not send a butt ton of emails <laughs> um <laughs> So this is for the love of pumpkin same base um, and then we have evergreen which again coming out very very um, what's the word I'm looking for washed out like it's very washed out um, this is a really beautiful like mossy evergreeny green like sp not sprucey green sprucey green is more like a blue green where this is very like mossy green like evergreen in the winter green and then the two fun colors so we have a speckle for this collection and I tried this time around to make the collections a little this collection a little more ad adhesive cohesive so you can mix and match colorways to put them together to make a project that would work. I have a tendency to go bananas and do all kinds of different colors and they don't work together. <laughs> so this is Autumn Breeze. It is a speckle. It is amazing. I love it. Like. It came out way better than I expected. So this is Autumn Breeze. And then this last one is Forest Floor. So it has a lot of the same colors in it. The 
the um but this one has a deeper more wine purple so you could still easily match up the green or orange to this colorway and it looks fantastic so this is forest floor i am just loving autumn right now it is insane so those are up in the shop ready to be shipped out to their new homes and let's see what else we are doing the second installment of the yarn and candle club the autumn yarn and candle club is out and i believe there is only one more week until pre-orders are done speaking of i have the first installment here so if you have bought yours and you have not received it yet i suggest skipping forward a few minutes i will put timestamps down below if you want to skip forward so you know exactly when I stop talking about it and showing it so you don't get your surprise ruined. So the scents I did not want to make mystery because I know people are very, 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 very picky about scents that they put in their home, which is why my candle business never took off because I did it online. So this is the candle that was in the yarn and candle club box. So you get a nice, big candle this is not like a little dinky boop. this is a good size candle that will last you quite a while i actually have a different one that i've made burning back right there <laughs> so this um scent in particular was falling leaves the other one i had was harvest berry which is similar to the colorway name i was inspired um that one didn't get bought so i took that fragrance and put it in some soaps which i made soaps this weekend or this two weeks ago so i've i've been very like creative this past month um oh my god it smells so good it's not like i don't even know how to explain it i'm not very good at explaining scents but it reminds me of like if you were to walk into a pure one imports at fall time like all the fall scents are like mixing there's like cinnamons and cloves and like citrus almost and apples and almost like a caramely vanilla smell in there too oh my god it smells amazing why they called it falling leaves I have no idea maybe because of you know fall and it smells like that but I don't know but it is amazing um, so I am going to show the yarn and if you do not want to see this, look away, look away. Okay. Sorry. I will not go into the um, series of unfortunate events. Um, so this is September's colorway, which is very similar to autumn floor or forest floor, <laughs> but there is speckling in it that is not in um forest floor where forest floor like here's a really good spot to show you there is a good amount of speckling it is heavily speckled with you know basically that purpley orange greeny undertone to it but there is like just this spot right here just shows the color so well oh my gosh it's amazing um and this colorway was called mystical because I feel like in fall, the world takes on this very mystical, magical feel to me. Um, and my finger is totally stuck in this yarn right now, like stuck. So I saw this and obviously it reminded me of fall because it is the September yarn in Candle Club colorway so here we go I, t I loosened it up a little bit so you can see more of those speckles and it's it's like a dream and this one's mine <laughs> this is mine that I made for me um so fall very much has a very mystical magical feeling to it to me same with winter it very it's very magical feeling so I felt mystical fit that colorway really well um which could be swapped with you know could be used with other ones even though this is a fingering weight this was an 80 20 
two ply so it won't necessarily go with the DK but you know you know so now that we got shop update done I will put this off to the side so pretty I cannot wait to use that we have a lot to cover sorry I'm gonna be going between water and some ginger ale um so first off let's get some FOs done because we have, like I said we have a lot a lot to cover I haven't even gotten into the projects yet and we're already at 10 minutes like okay so I have this FO right here which is this yarn it is a sugar and cream Lily sugar and cream um I'm trying to see if I have another one with a tag still on it because I don't remember what it's called to be honest um, I am so not prepared for this guys yeah I don't have another one with a tag so this is the grandma's favorite uh, knitted washcloth so I did this one in I know it calls for 45 stitches or 45 ro 45 stitches across at the widest base point but I wanted them a little bigger so I go to 48 so that's the first one and then the second one is a Christmas colored one which I am not sure I like the look of so this one I can tell you is Yuletide is the colorway which I saw this initially and I was like yay Christmas colors like let's do it I don't know if I'm feeling this so yeah I don't know what I'm gonna do with that one yet I may give it away to someone I am not sure but this was the other color so it has a pale green yellow pink orange and white um and then next up I I've been seeing pumpkins everywhere so I was like you know what put it on this side <laughs> I'm making myself a pumpkin so this is the pumpkin into sizes um, which I did not stuff this enough I thought I did and I got so carried away and just closed this up but I was going to put rice or beans in it and my kids threw this around the house like it was a damn basketball um, <laughs> I was going to put rice or beans like a bag of rice or beans in the bottom so it was heavy enough that I could put it outside on my little cute fall display that I started which as you could tell it is fall in my house but it is not fall outside it is still very hot in eastern North Carolina so yeah I am getting myself in the fall mood regardless of what it feels like outside so I made my pumpkin um, all the patterns will be linked to down below with all the information of yarn choices I used because um, honestly this yarn was sitting in like this I did not have a tag so this was pulled from stash and geez Louise why is there hair over everything like it's like dog hair so this was the orange I used. I know it's a um, loops and threads impeccable um, and then the green for the stem, which is a tweed, is camo tweed, also a um, loops and threads impeccable, which I, you know, it's so funny because I never really liked tweed. And then I saw a few people on Instagram do it the right way. And I'm just like, I am feeling tweed now. <laughs> I love tweed. Um, so that is it for FOs. I did get a lot done in the way of finished objects, but I did get a lot done. So we'll start with the big project that I have been working on for what feels like forever. Um, and that is the flax sweater that I am making my brother-in-law. So 
This thing is a beast, let me tell you. I put this thing on and it is very much a comfy oversized sweater, um, but it is long on me. <laughs> um, I'm 5'5", five five. my brother-in-law is 5 or 6'1", not 5'1", good gravy. This would be a dress on him if that was the case. He is 6'1", so he has a significantly longer torso than me. So this is <laughs> the sweater. Sleeve one is complete. Sleeve two, almost complete. Um, there are 15 increases on this size and there's one, two, three, four, five, 10, 11, 12 increases. So I have three more to go. Plus, then I had to do a couple more inches, and this was all I had left. I knew I wasn't going to finish it, so I ended up buying another ball of Pansy Purple, because this was my very last one, um, which you'll see in acquisitions, because let me tell you, there is a lot of acquisitions. I kind of went a little crazy, excuse me, with buying yarn this past month, which I'm trying to get better at not doing, and I think I have done a very good job. Of not buying yarn and when I did buy yarn I was restrained the first time today was a whole other story so this is the flax I am actually making the 3x size so it is pretty big like this is very oversized on me like by a good five six inches it is oversized on me um but he said he was a 2x and they didn't give me a measurement like I asked what his chest measurement was. So this could be completely ginormous on him. I don't know um, because I have boobs and it's still big on me and he doesn't have boobs. <laughs> so yes, I am so close to being finished, which I am hoping to finish this up this weekend. So I can finally say that this sucker is off the needles. Um, so yes, the yellow that I am using, sorry, I'm so like trying to get through this that I'm rushing and forgetting details. The yellow, this is all paint box yarn, um, Simply Erin. So this is an entirely acrylic sweater. It is going to be very toasty and warm. Um, this yellow is buttercup yellow and the purple is pansy purple. Um, I don't have the numbers in front of me right now for the colorway numbers, but I did continue. I did do the garter stitch panel. I really like it. I think it looks really good. It's a nice detail without being too difficult. So I am getting so close to this being done and I had to wait, like I said, to get more yarn for it, um, which came in last week. So granted, I could have finished this this week, but I got consumed with other projects like the pumpkin and <laughs> other stuff. So that was that one. And I'm going to have to apologize to you guys right now because a lot of these patterns I do not remember the names of. I saw it, clicked it, and started making. Like I'm just, <laughs> my creative brain has just been going like 500 miles a minute and has not let me like do anything in regards to remembering what they're called, who made them. So everything will be linked down below. Um, I need to get on the game with doing my project pages because I am so stinking behind. Um, so this next project is a bun beanie. It is knitted. Um, and it is my very first cable project. I have never done cables before. Um, so this is going to be my sister's. And if Stephanie, if you're watching this, look away right now. Um, <laughs> look away. So, oh my gosh. Every time I say look away, I think of series of unfortunate events. And then the song starts playing in my head. So this is my very first cable project. There we go. 
So, like I said, I do not remember the name of this project. Um, but I will link it down below. It is a free pattern on this woman's blog, whoever created it, because like I said, I don't remember. Um, it is a free pattern and it is a bun beanie, but they also give you the option for a normal beanie. Okay, I need to stop drinking soda or I'm gonna be burping the whole time. Um, so the yarn that I am using for this is Lion Brand Ice Cream Yarn which is these really pretty beiges, creams, and like a very light brown. And this is the coffee colorway. So this is technically a baby yarn, but I do not care if it is soft, I use it. So this is what I have been working on for this. So this is going to be my sister's gift. Um, I will say I did want to make one modification to the original pattern. It called for just a one by one rib, but I have been practicing my twisted rib. And honestly, I just like how clean the ribbing looks with the twisted rib. Like it just, it looks so much cleaner. The stitches look so much more even. It just makes my heart happy. So with that being said, that is another project that I have started that I've been working on. Um, if I can get it back in here. So like I said, this is my very first project with cables. And I did do it wrong. <laughs> So I was supposed to drop the first two. So when you're doing it, it's a four stitch, I technically a two stitch cable. So two on each side. So the first two you drop back and then work and then pull behind and then work those. Well, I did it wrong and dropped into the front. So <laughs> it's wrong, but I'm gonna just keep doing it the way I started it because I didn't want to rip back. And I was already like an extra five, six rows ahead already. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. <laughs> it's going to be left leaning. So the next project that I have been working on was a me project. This is a project for me because I needed it. Um, and me and Christina of the, yeah, Christina, I, I know so many Christines and Christinas right now that I, I always worry that I'm calling them the wrong name because I know three Christines and two Christinas at the moment. That's five. That's ridiculous. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Christina of the Blissful Stitch podcast and I were talking about the ripple bralette and how we both wanted to do it. So we talked about it and we were like, we should totally do it together. So once I got my needles, we started it the same day. So this is my, the start of my ripple bralette. It's been kind of on hold for a minute. So the colorways that I am using, this is my yarn. This is Sleepy Fox Yarn Co. in the Northern Lights colorway. And I'm going to fade that into, I'm gonna fade it into Dark Fairy. So there we go. That's a better look. So these two are gonna become my Ripple Bralette together. Um, and I do remember this one because I actually have the pattern sitting in front of me. Okay, so this is the Ripple Bralette by Jessie Mae Martinson of Jessie Made Designs. So this is what it looks like. And this goes all the way up to a 62 inch bust size. So this is definitely for bigger girls because you are doing a smaller 
ease, you're doing 9 to 11 inches of negative ease, you really don't use a lot. Like, I will never in my life ever get away with only two skeins of yarn for something. So this is a plus for me. So I'm actually making, I believe, I can't remember if I'm making the large or the extra large. I think I'm making the large, but I added six stitches because my tension was off. So yeah. So that's what I've been working on. I've finished, and this is on, what size needles are these? 3.5 millimeter needles. So this, I have done the cuff. Sorry, I'm trying to see what I'm pointing at. I have done the cuff or the bra band, I guess you can say. And I'm finally getting on to the actual bralette part, which is a three by three rib, basically the entire way. So at this point, it's just a matter of just sitting down and getting it done. But I have so much <coughs> choking on my own spit, Jesus. <coughs> Good gravy. Okay, so, <laughs> whew almost died so this is another product I started and have been working on slowly making progress with um, now me and Christina both agreed we are making this so it will be a bra so we want it to be very tight fitting you can make this bigger and have it more tube, not tube top a uh, crop top style but we very much were like no I want this to be my bra so my reason is maybe different from hers, but because of my gluten in in my gluten sensitivity that I've been having, I've noticed I've been having a lot of issue with spandex and latex and polyester and you know those there's strips on bras that are supposed to be the anti-slip part of the bra. Well, that drives my skin mad lately it's just like no I do not think so take this shit off now oh sorry um <laughs> like my skin gets that mad it cusses at me so I am trying to find an alternative that I can wear that's going to be comfortable for me and I feel like a wool I know it is wool so it could be scratchy but this doesn't feel scratchy to me. Ooh. This doesn't feel scratchy. Like, it's definitely not the softest. This is an 80-20, and it's a two-ply. It's not the softest, but it isn't the worst I've felt. So that's for sure. Um, I think I'll be fine. I don't think this will bother me much. And because it is a fingering weight, I really don't think it's going to be too hot, but I mean, hello, bras are hot to begin with, so I will suffer through if it is hot. <laughs> so that is another whip I have been working on. I am speeding through this. I'm trying to speed through this. So if I miss any details, I am sorry. <laughs> Just ask me in the comments and I will be able to answer. Um, I'm thinking of that. Okay, so the last project I am so ecstatic about because I've gotten so far on it. So this is in my Lila style bags. The other ones have been in these like taffeta drawstring bags because I do order from Love Crochet or it used to be called Love Crochet and then Love Knitting, but now it's just called Love Crafts. They merge the two together. Um, so I've been using those as project bags because they come with yarn. So might as well. But this is my Hocus Pocus Lila Styles bag. And inside, I have been working on my father-in-law's socks. So this, I have a hoe. I should have done this one first. But I have a hoe. I have an entire sock made. I have busted my butt on this sucker. And it's huge. Um, he is a size 11. And I tried on my husband, who is a size 11, 12, and he said it fit very comfortably. So I am super proud about that. 
I did a two by two cuff all the way down, um, a slip stitch heel flap and gusset, which this is the heel flap and gusset from the, um, morning coffee socks by K of, um, crazy sock lady podcast. I really liked her heel. It was super easy and to the point. Um, and then on the top half, I continued the two by two ribbing just to give some extra stretch and then just normal stockinette on the back with just a toe, a toe. I don't know what this is called. I think this is called a rounded toe. I have no idea. Um, but I wanted to continue the two by two along the top because my father-in-law has trouble with his feet swelling where two by two would give him a lot of extra stretch for when his feet do swell and he can still wear these socks. So I'll give you a closer look at the colors. I love these. I love this color. So here it is caked up. I love this colorway and my husband even loves it. Nick loves this color and he asks, I've been asking him, I'm like, please just ask me to make you something. Like, please, I want to make you something, but I want to know you're going to wear it. And he was like, uh, you can make me a hat with the same color that my dad's socks are. And I'm like, damn it. I only have one skein of this. I only bought one because I only plan to make socks, but now he wants some. So now I have to find it. But when I looked it up on Biscotti Yarns, they are not the same. Ooh. Okay. Dismiss. Okay, I'm just going to put you on silent. Um, so this is a Biscotti Yarns. Yeah, my daughter decided to cut it. This is Biscotti Yarns, and this is the um, Butterfly Wings colorway in their Bis Sock. It is a 85 Superwash Merino 15% nylon, 400 yards. So, whoop, and then there's the colorway name. Now, when I looked up butterfly wings on their site, the colorway was completely different, and I was like, shoot, this is the colorway he wants. And I wanted to go to my local yarn shop where I bought it, and see if she had any more. But the thing is, is I've bought this yarn well over a month ago and I don't know if she's gonna have any more. So, yeah. With that being said, I am on the second sock. I have finished the cuff and I am currently working on the heel flap part. Now, the heel flap, which Okay, sorry, I was trying to see. I could not remember for the life of me what I used to work the heel flap on the first sock. So the second sock, I'm using a 2.25 millimeter needle, but the sock is being knit on a 2.75 millimeter. I think it's 2.75. 2.5 2 or 2.75 millimeter needle. I can't remember. Um, we'll look at it, dummy. 2.75. Chow goo. Um, eight inch circulars or nine inch circulars, whatever the heck it is. I love these little things. Once you get going on them, I know for a heel flap, you kind of have to pull the heel flap off and then work it. But man, once you got them on those needles and I am not someone that holds needles, I very much like the tip. Like, yes, I will kind of hold it if it's there, but my fingers more rest on top of it. So it isn't a big deal if I don't have really long needles. So this works out really well for me. So um, there is no sock pattern. Like I said, the only thing that I used to a pattern was the heel flap and gusset, um, which was from Kay's Morning Coffee Socks because I loved her slip stitch heel um, gusset and heel flap. So that is it for works and projects, FOs, hoes, you know, 
so I can breathe. Not really. So next up, we will go into acquisitions because I actually have quite a few, um, as well as the projects that some of these are going to be used for. Some of them I don't have anything planned for quite yet, or I do like I have a mindset, but then others I'm like, this is what I bought the yarn for. That's what I'm using it for. Okay, so I ordered from Love Crochet or Love Knitting or Love Crafts, whatever they want to call it now. I ordered yarn from them and this got here about two weeks ago. So the first one I'm going to take out because I need to put it with my uh, sweater that I need to finish. Um, the first one is the Simply Erin in the Pansy Purple colorway. Now the rest of these, I am not going to know the colorway name. I'll have the number, but not the name. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pull this stuff out of here because I'm going to actually see if they give you this nice taffeta drawstring bag. That is a really decent size, which somehow got wax on it. Um, that you can use for project bags. So these are really nice. It's really nice to order from them because they put stuff in bags for you. And then I got a second bag. So most of the yarn that I bought is going to two projects. So the pink was the third project or the purple. Um, so that dark pansy purple that is to finish off the sweater. And then I plan on making the Mountain Mist by, I believe it's Tin Can Knits, um, which is a color work sweater, <sighs> which makes me nervous, but I really, really love the way it looks. It's super simple color work in terms of color work um, from what I have heard. So, and this is going to be Collins. So this is the color palette I chose for the Mountain Mist. So it goes um this nice like misty gray which i think that's what this color is called misty gray uh color 203 i'm gonna remember these i'm gonna try i don't know this one though i'm pretty sure this is washed teal and this is 232 so these are simply uh paybox simply erin as well um because as much as i would love to use wool for my kids Colin is an absolute monster with his clothes <laughs> and he is growing so fast that I don't know I want to I don't want to spend the money on a good quality wool yarn like hand dyed yarn for them yet until I know they're going to be wearing it for more than a season if not it kind of feels wasteful to me um so this is I believe wash teal in 232 and then there is this color, which I do not remember, 226. And then this very dark green in the color number is 227. So as you can see, it's a nice progression. I wish this was more like a greeny blue, like a sprucey blue, but I did not see that. And I feel like that would have been perfect. So this is like the color, ugh gradient that I'm going for with his mountain mist I'm really hoping to start that soon like oh my god so Emma's is going to be the worsted sock arms sweater and then Collins is going to be the mountain mist sweater and then I'm also going to do a little baby sweater for my niece Heidi and this is the color I chose for her, which I believe is lilac something. Um, it is the Paintbox Yarn Baby DK in the color 745. So yes, I am going to be knitting her a little baby sweater, which should go pretty stinking fast since she's basically going to be fitting in the one year size. So that'll go real fast. Hopefully. 
so that is what I got from Love Crafts, and that are those are two projects that I plan on doing. Which with the baby sweater, um, I have one bookmarked, but I cannot for the life of me remember what it was called. So now, that was a very restrained yarn order from Love Crafts. Let me tell you, very restrained. I had two projects in mind. I knew what I was gonna do, and I was gonna get started. So basically once I finish her dad's sweater, I'm gonna start working on the baby sweater. And the kids' sweaters, I'm not working on right yet. Um, I want to finish up most of the projects going out and then start working on theirs, which I'm getting very close to. I started the cowl for my niece, but I have to redo that because it is too large. So first things first, I went to Michael's today Sorry, I completely fell out of frame. Um, I went to Michael's today because they have just reopened our Michael's because they moved. So they were having really good sales, like fantastic sales. So first thing I found, pom-poms, um, which are really thick pom-poms now that I feel them. So I have five of these. This is the Gray Wolf. Mom. What? The door. No. I'm almost done. Okay. This is white. It's just called white. And then this one is called Shepherd Burger. And then I think these are the same. Yeah, and these are lion's mane. So I plan on using pom-poms, which these are not, I mean, these have a very thick inside, so they're not like the super floofy ones that you can like, but I mean, I don't know. That's my head, not a hat, clearly. <laughs> So that's what I got. Those were, I can't remember if they were $1.99 or $2.99 each, but I also had 15% um, off for my military or teacher discount. So I always get 15% off no matter what. Um, so then I got some cotton, like I need more flipping cotton but it was 99 cents and I'm still making um <sighs> washcloths and I kind of want them to make matching sets so I got this this is the soft ecru color ecru or ecru which is basically just a cream um and then I got two of these ones lily sugar and cream in the potpourri ombre. I don't know how that is potpourri, but apparently it is potpourri. Potpourri. So that, and then these ones, I got two of these to go with another color. So this is sage green. I got two sage greens to go with these two so as you can see they very much go well together and this one is called <gasps> green twists so it's a um marled yarn and then sorry i keep popping out of frame but i have this giant bag sitting on the floor I got two of the Fleur de Lavend. There's no R. It just says Lavend. Lavand. 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 I don't know. So this is very bright, very kid friendly in my opinion. Because it seems like everybody has girls in the family. I ha have one of the few boys. And then that one is to go with this color which is really not showing it's blowing out really bad and this is just lavender 
And then I got into the more big skein. So I got some Lion Brand Wool Ease Thick and Quick in the Fisherman colorway. And then I got, they had a really good sale. So all the yarn was, um, let me just take it out so I don't have to deal with the bag because bags are so annoying. I'm sorry. I'm totally pulling out my Valley Girl. Like that is so annoying. Okay. <laughs> so the Red Hot, Red Hot? <laughs> Red Heart Soft and Soft Essential was $2.49 at my um, Michael's. So I hopped on that train real quick because normally they're $5.49 each at mine. Um, so I got two of the soft in the off-white color. And then I got two of the Soft Essentials, which... I'm not sure these are bulky so the essential is bulky um and this is the colorway biscuit i don't know why but i love this color i just oh it's so pretty and then i got some loops and thread impeccable and this is one of their like tweed colorways this is the brown tweed even though this is clearly gray, but brown tweed, <laughs> is that, that has to be labeled wrong. Nope, both say brown tweed. And then I also got these ones because I love this tweed. This is Erin tweed. And then this is another Red Heart Soft in the navy colorway. I figured this and then this gray would go really well together and this is the soft in the light gray heather i figured those would look really good as like a beanie for colin or something and then of course orange and green so this is tangerine also red heart soft and then this one is dark leaf in red heart soft so i went a little bananas on yarn today which I feel like I have not done forever. It's been a while. Um, so yeah, <sighs> life stuff we will move into, which I'm gonna make it real sweet and short. Emma started school again, which we homeschool. We are a homeschooling family. Um, so with that meant homeschool park days are starting up again, all kinds of activities for us to do are starting up again where they won't be extremely busy with summer um, and kids going back to school so it is way nicer to go out of the house now because it isn't constantly packed um, and then we got hit with Hurricane Dorian which happened the week I was supposed to podcast and I could have podcasted but my nerves were kind of a wreck because I was preparing for a hurricane that was supposed to be a category three, category two, when it hit us, ended up being a two, I think closer to one, I'm, I can't remember. But I was expecting full on power outages, we were gonna be without power, our food in the refrigerators were gonna go bad like it did with Florence, and <laughs> our power flickered that was it i was super surprised but the power flickered basically like it was off for a couple minutes and kicked back on and that was pretty much it um we got very very lucky because there are still places in north carolina that did get quite a bit of flooding and a lot of power outages so we got very lucky with how well we did we didn't have any damage we didn't have any flooding except our backyard um, which did not come in the house. It was just our backyard and our back porch. So, yeah, we got real lucky there. And, like, I've been busy making. <laughs> I made soaps. I've made, obviously, all these projects. Dyed yarn. Did the candle club. Did the Halloween advents. So, I have been busy. <laughs> Very busy. And to top it off, 
I am a Sims 4 player. I love Sims 4. And I love to build and all that stuff. And the new Magic Pack just came out. 